Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. Uh, my name is Tyler Colt and in this video we're going to be walking through a brand new feature for Zoho Desk which enables us to create custom modules. So for those in CRM you're probably very used to the idea of a custom module. If you're just a desk user this is going to be something that's a little bit new for you within the suite of Zoho tools so we thought we'd create a video like this to get you up to speed. So before we jump in I do want to ask if you find this video useful please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out. Uh, and then make sure to add any video requests, feedback, comments, anything like that down into the comment section down below uh, as we try to read through each one of those on a weekly basis. Uh, so without any further ado, let us jump right on into the walkthrough. Alrighty, so jumping on in, we are going to be using this demo account here to create a custom module. In this case, I'm gonna use this to create one of the most important custom modules that I've seen a need for inside of Zoho Desk, which is a serialized inventory list. Lots of different companies may have a need to track tickets against specific items that are sold and deployed to customers. Uh, this could be a physical item, a software product with a license key, really whatever it is, but we need to know that they have a unique instance of a particular product where we are going to provide support. Um, so to do that, we're gonna set up two modules, a baseline items list, as well as a serialized items list, which are essentially the unique versions of that generalized item. So to do that here, what we're gonna do is jump into the setup in the top right, and we've got this new tab for modules. This is where we're gonna to go to get started here. And within modules, what you'll see by default are all of the normal modules, our accounts, our contacts, our tickets, um, you know, our calls, events, et cetera. You will see there is a products module here and you may be thinking, um, you know, why are we gonna create an items list if we already have that as products? Right now, the products list is not really supported in interacting with custom modules. Um, I would expect that will be supported in the future. So double check that when you get to this point. For now, we're going to create our own item list. Um, and then I will show you how to create a serialized item list related to that, all using the new custom modules. So up in the top right, we're going to create a new module. And in this module, this is going to be the place that we're going to store the list of items, right? So this is something that you could set up a sync from CRM or from Zoho Books. But we will go ahead and call this items. Now, a couple things to choose as we're creating a module, um, obviously the name, we also need to make sure that we define who it should be accessible for, like which department this is relevant to. In our case, items and serialized items are probably gonna be necessary for all departments. Examples of different departments would be like service versus billing, right? And, and both of these could have to interact with a particular item. We can also determine if they should be department level data storage or organization level storage. Again, a lot of the time you're gonna be org level rather than department level. Um, again, for our example here, a serialized item is the same whether the billing department or the technical support department is looking at it. So we wanna make this organization wide. Then last but not least, we'll need to define which user roles should have access to this module. So in our case, we're gonna go with all. In some cases, you might say, you know what, newbie agents, they're never gonna touch anything related to a serialized item, so they could be removed. But in our case, we're gonna keep them active here. So now we've got two options. We can either save down here in the bottom left or save and go to layouts. The only difference is save and go to layouts is gonna save us a step. It's basically gonna drop us into the place where we can add fields to this particular module. So I'm gonna click save and go to layouts now. What it's doing in the background right now is essentially creating the baseline module where we can then add our fields to define what we may want to track about that particular item. So in this case, um, we've got a couple of the default fields, you know, the layout, we're not going to need to worry about that. The item owner, that's just a system field. And then the name. So this is where like the product name would go within this set. We can think through a couple other pieces of data that we may want to track about a particular item, and we can just click and drag those in from the left-hand side. So one thing we always want to have on an item is like a product code or a SKU. I'm going to call it a SKU here, but really this is just up to you. We can define if it should be required. I would say it should be um, for really any product. I like to have a code or a SKU that I know is never going to change. We won't go down that rabbit hole now, but I would say it's a best practice. So in our case, we're going to make that required. 
Other things we might want to have just for the purposes of reporting and kind of data accessibility, we might want to have like the list price of this item. And we can set that as a currency field and just add that right here. Now you can start getting creative here, depending on like what um, your items look like and, and what data you need to track about them. For some people, you might have like a baseline warranty, right? And you would say like, this item has a baseline warranty of three years. And so you can add all of that data here just directly into the product page. Now, one other thing I'll show you just while we're in here, of course, we can add sections. So if I wanna go ahead and click and drag just a section into the layouts. So maybe I wanna create one for like system information. And that's where I might put like the layout selector, the item owner, some of these things that just don't matter when I quickly look at an item to see some of the high level data about it. Now. Here, we could definitely go down the rabbit hole, right? There's a lot of data that we might choose to track about a particular item. Um, but in this case, for the point of this walkthrough, you've seen me click and drag fields here. Uh, you'll be able to do that for any of the things that you need to track. So I'm not gonna belabor the point too much. And what we're gonna do is save and close this first module. So now we have our items. Uh, this is basically gonna be where we would park like the baseline item with a base price and the SKU. Um, but you'll notice that this items list, I didn't add a serialized item to, or a serial number to. Reason being, we're going to create a new module to do that. So up here in the top right, we're going to repeat the steps. I'm going to go a little quicker this time because I think we went over this uh, these steps before. So we'll create a serialized items list, make it org level, turn it on for all of our users. And then I'll click that save and go to layout. All right, so our module's been created. Time to kind of go through our steps again here of adding fields. So first we'll add this system information section. I always just like to do this. I do it in CRM. I do it in really everywhere that I end up interacting with. Um, actually, we'll keep the name up here. Put the item owner down below. A couple things as we go through this. Now, in, in this case, you've got some options. Uh, you might want the serialized item name to be the product name. You might want it to be the serial number itself. Um, that's kind of up to you at the end of the day. Um, in my case, we're going to say that this will be where we put our serial number, right? Main reason is it makes it a lot easier to search, right? So if it comes up in a list and I want to use this top right search bar and I just enter in a serial, it would pop up based on the name and it'd be really easy for me to see that. A couple other things I may want in here, and I'm going to show this pretty intentionally so I can show you something else. Um, let's say we want to have that skew again, just pulling in that can come from that baseline item. And then let's say we wanna have a option for the price that they paid. Now, again, you might think, well, why wouldn't we just pull this from the actual option that the um, product has by default? Well, you never know. There might be actually a different price for this. So we'll call this the customer price, right? Maybe they got a discount, right? Maybe they bought them in bulk, so they got some type of pricing deal. And so we'll call that the customer price, just so that we know this is what they actually paid for this particular product. Now, other things we can have in here that I'll show that that are more relevant for a um, serialized item than an item itself. Maybe you want to have like a warranty expiration date. Um, this can be really important for processing tickets, right? Is this going to be billable or is this not going to be billable based on when this warranty is going to be expired? Um, again. You can kind of go deeper and deeper on these and continue to add more fields uh, as may be necessary. So now that we've got a couple of our baseline fields added, it is time to add a lookup field. Uh, so a lookup field, of course, is basically a pointer to a different module. Uh, so in this case, we're going to be looking up the item list. We want to call our field the item name because that is what's going to pull into this. The module that we're going to look up, we could pull from accounts, contacts, tickets, items, or serialized items. You actually point to the module that you're in right now. Um, in our case, we're just going to point it to items. That's where we want to pull this data from. Then under advanced settings, we do have a couple additional options. So if we wanted to filter the records that should show up in the lookup view, we can go ahead and do that. One important thing here is, is just to make sure that you've set up any of those fields in advance on that module first. So an example is maybe if I had like an item type, I could say only show ones where item type is goods. Or if I had some type of like SKU structure, I could say like only show SKUs that contain item 
right? Or whatever the kind of uh, naming convention is that would indicate the type of data that I'm looking to pull in. In our case, we're not going to filter it, but this is just a powerful tool. So I want to make sure I showed you. Go ahead and disable that filter. We can also determine what should show up when we actually search in this field. In our case, like example, the item name, the department, the item owner, we don't really need that. Let's, let's get it out of there. It's going to be a lot quicker to look at. And then lastly, we can actually determine if we want to fill in any fields on our serialized item table based on what we have in our items table. So here I can go ahead and map the SKU to the SKU. One important thing here that I actually found as I was playing with this is you won't be able to do this step unless you've saved the layout already. So you have to kind of save and lock in the fields before you can pre-map them. And all this is going to do is just save me a little bit of time, right? So I might also want to pull in that list price. Again, it may be different, but a lot of the times it's probably going to match, right? So let's save ourselves a click um, and pull that in as a default value. So a couple other things that we may want to add here as part of this custom module, and I would add this as a new section, is maybe our information about our customer. And I'm going to drag this just down to the second slot here. Um, and again, these would just be more lookup fields, right? So we could add a lookup to the contact for this particular item. Again, this might be like the primary person that is relevant for support if we ever need to get in touch with somebody. We can also add maybe their account, right? So just based on selecting that account, we can know that a particular item is allocated to this customer, right? So these are just kind of quick things that you can add here to make sure that you've created proper relationships to everything that is relevant uh, within the workflow. So with our lookups added here, we've got our relationships to the baseline item, the contact, the account. We've pulled in some of our default fields that are relevant for us. Let us go ahead and close the loop here. So if you've been following along, you can probably notice there's one more thing that I do need to do, um, which is actually create a relationship from a ticket to a serialized item. Right. And so this would essentially allow me to actually track a ticket based on the serialized item that is relevant for that ticket. So I can just go ahead and add a lookup here. Call it the serialized item, point it over to our module and click add. And just like that, we are good to go. Go ahead and give this just a second to save and then we can jump in and take a look at how this works in practice. Alrighty, so with those modules saved and created, we can now see up at the top, we've got serialized items and items. Um, so all we need to do now is just add a little bit of data to those so that we can finalize our demo here. Um, so let's go ahead and within our items, we see we've got nothing there. Um, up in the top right is where we can always go to add new data. So I can add an item here. We'll call this our example item with SKU 123 and a list price of 100. And then we'll go ahead and submit that. Now from the item page, you can actually see we've got a serialized item that we could uh, uh, create or associate right here from inside of our example product. Um, instead, where I'm gonna go and do this is from a customer record. It's kind of the more natural place where this would be done. Um, so here inside of an example contact, this is more likely where we're going to add items, either via a sync or via, you know, a script or an import. Um, so from here, we'll create a new serialized item for this particular contact. And so our serialized item name will just be, you know, serial dash one, two, three, four, five. From our items list, we can connect it to our example product, which we'll see pulled in that SKU and that customer price. Then we can grab our contact and account. And if we wanted, we could set like our warranty expiration date. I'll go ahead and just set something so that we have some data in there. Um, but these could be, of course, created via an import, via API, via whichever method is most convenient for you. And now I'll submit this. So now within this particular customer record, this contact or this account, if we go there, we'll always be able to see that we have this serial number associated with them. Now, last but not least, from within a ticket, we'll have that option to actually relate a serialized item based on this customer. So there we go. I can go ahead and save this item and connect it directly to the ticket. And so what this will do down the line is give you the ability, primarily through a tool like Zoho Analytics, 
um, to actually create reports on the number of tickets, the workload, et cetera, that is being allocated to a particular serialized item. At the end of the day, lots of different ways that these modules can be used. This is just one of many. Um, I wanted to show this one because it's one that I bump into all the time and talking with Zoho users. Uh, this is something that I know a lot of people are hoping to get done. Um, so I do hope that this video was useful for you in kind of understanding custom modules as well as creating your own. If you needed serialized item tracking, you can just copy this and it will work pretty darn well for you. But as always, it is a pleasure to create these videos for you. And I really do hope that you found them useful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe down below as that really does help us out and make sure that YouTube will show you future videos like this one uh, when we create them. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.